unfortunately. Damn, spoiled. Yeah. <laughs> London generic. Hmm. Actually, um, no, I'm in Bristol. Yes, yes, yes. that's where I am. Bristol. Damn, spoiled. Um, I yeah. like your Merlin. Stuff. London Can't generic. You know? Thank you, mate. Um, actually, no, yeah. I'm enough. Oh, I'll talk to you afterwards. Yes, yes, <laughs> yes, that's where I am. <laughs> yeah. Being in Downing, I have a, have a um, word like with you about Merlin something. London yeah. generic. Yeah. So, yeah. Thank you, mate. Yeah. Actually, no, yeah. I'm enough. Oh, I'll talk to you afterwards. Yes, yes, that's where I am. You're on. Being in Downing, I have a quick word with you about something. London generic. Thank you, mate. Actually, no, I'm enough. Oh, I'm still. So yes. to everyone out yes. there who's watching, you're on. I'm quick and busy. Thank you, man. No, I mean, I'm still. I'm still. Bottom of your screen. Press that button and you can share your questions with the panel. Um, we already have. Dozens and dozens of questions. I'm not going to be able to get to all of them. Bottom of your screen. Um, thank you, Bradley. Said I'm doing a good job so far. Um, <laughs> um, we'll get to as many as we can in the time we dozens have. Dozens and dozens of questions. Uh, we'd to love to know where you're watching from. Um, so if you could tell us Bradley, where you are when you send your question, that would be great. Um, <laughs> if you're watching on Facebook, Twitter, or YouTube, uh, <clears> use the comment section to ask your questions. We can see it that way. Where you are when you send your question. And for everyone who submitted questions. In advance, thank you very much. We'll get through as many as we can. Towards the end of this QA, two fans, only two, will have the opportunity to ask questions live on camera to the panel. We'll get to see you. So please behave yourself. But if you'd like to take part, uh, use the raise hand we'll button the opportunity to ask uh, now live on, on Zoom, and the administrator will contact you about how it's going to work. And uh, finally, um, we know the raise hand. Uh, some essential workers would love to be here live with us and can't be because they're busy taking care of the rest of us. And so we'd like to send a special thank you to all of you. And we're grateful you'll be able to watch this delayed, not live, but we're thinking of you and really appreciate your support. So without further ado, I would like to introduce this beautiful panel. Um, I don't know what order you're on on your Zoom screens, but um, Daniel Sharman. Hello, everybody, all 913 of you. Mm -hmm. uh, Bradley James. Oh, hi. Hey. Yeah. Sarah Parrish. Yeah. <laughs> Nerva Carlson. Yay. Yay. Yeah, well, there should be applause. Thank you. William. <laughs> oh, William. <laughs> and the my my partner, the great producer, Luca Bernabe. Yay. Ah, hello. So here we are, and we have so many questions. Um, I'm just going to begin. And well, I mean, sorry. Go ahead. And well. Oh, he's already mentioned me. He already introduced. Oh, me. I got him. I got everybody. <laughs> I think I got everybody. Um. If I could just ask each of the actors, how did you prepare? I'm sorry, Frank, and everybody knows you, but I mean, oh yeah, me, famous Frank. writer, showrunner, and partner producer with me of the show, Frank Spotnik. Introduce myself. Uh, so for the actors, if you could just tell us briefly, how did each of you prepare for the role in Medici? What did you do? In any particular order. Go on, Dan. Off you go. Yeah. Um, well, I, well, I think by preparing in, in terms of, um, you know, I think I personally I did a lot of reading and a lot of kind of, um, I, I went to Italy a bit early and I just wanted to kind of um, do a lot of tour. We got an amazing tour guide in Florence who sh showed me around, did a lot of, um, yeah, just a lot of reading, a lot of audio books, a lot of kind of, uh, immersing myself in understanding the history of it and then uh yeah and then I I, I got there a bit early to eat, eat like a proper Italian and you know uh relax like a proper Italian and really that that I feel was a uh, was key to uh understanding uh Lorenzo very good anyone else 
Well, again, I think like Dan, I, we did a lot. Of, I think when you are playing um, a real person, you have a real responsibility as an actor to do as much research as you possibly can. And because his family is are so influential in medieval Europe, you know, I felt that it was really important to read up on uh, Lucrezia and, and find out what kind of woman she was. And it was quite amazing to to find out about a woman who, in the day and age when women were seen and not heard, had so much to say, you know, and, and was so learned and so political and so artistic um so yeah i did a lot of research on her it was really important i think that's my daughter excuse me <laughs> william bradley Sonova. also as yeah i mean just kind of i guess similar lots of reading and what was amazing about being in rome for my character in particular was that she was from rome so whilst everyone else was from florence they didn't get to shoot in Florence. They didn't really get to immerse themselves in the Medici, whereas I got to see the Orsini family, like walk around and find out where where her family was from, which was cool. But following on from Sarah's point, like what I did notice was there's so much less written about women. So you have to go the extra mile to find, like there would be pages and pages and pages on Lorenzo. And then there'd be like a sentence at the bottom about Clarice, um, which is, you know, the way things go. So I felt even more of a responsibility to like, I had to buy a load of books because there was just a line in lots of books. Um, so you're kind of grasping for information. But that's kind of good in a way because you have to like broaden your scope for of research and um, yeah. Very good. All right, gentlemen, come on. Don't be shy. Why they doing it next? I, um, thank you, William. I uh, did a lot of the things you've just heard that everybody else did. Uh, there's two things I could throw in the mix that were slightly different. One was that I bought the Assassin's Creed game that I heard had uh, the Medici in it. And I was like, oh, I'll learn loads from this. And I played it for ages, completed a bunch of tasks, like waiting for the Medici to turn up. They eventually do turn up and then they disappear just as quickly. So that was almost a complete waste of my time. It was a good game. Is it a game? Um, the, the what? Is it expensive? Um, I feel like I probably got my money's worth, the <laughs> amount of have you got it? Have you got it with you right now? I mean, I can, I can see it if I <laughs> explain myself to look. I feel lockdown. Yeah. Um, Completed it, no big deal. Um, the other thing was that I looked at uh, sibling dynamics in like powerful families. And obviously the best example we have in England is of William and Harry. Mm -hmm. And uh, just try to pick out sort of like similarities, tropes that I could use with the relationship between Giuliano and Lorenzo. So which one of you is William and which one of you is Harry? Um, I, I mean, I would assume uh, it was relatively straightforward in that Daniel Lorenzo was playing the William. Yes. Giuliano was the more fun one who everybody liked a bit more, Giuliano. <laughs> <laughs> Moving on, William. <laughs> I did the same you guys did. I did a little bit of research on Giovanni. And also just the locations we went to when we were filming really helped like the pair just because they're all so old and it was very easy to act and getting kind of that imagination of Giovanni and the characters at that time. So yeah, I did pretty much everything you guys did as well. Somebody's asked about wearing the costumes. Yeah, I think that's a, that was one other thing I would say was I was really nervous when I, I remember when I first got the job because I went to drama school and there was always, always talk about like the time period and like how you hold yourself and also like how like the clothing sort of like enforces the way that people relate to each other and act towards each other so I think when you actually get into the costumes there was suddenly this like transformation and you I don't know this I mean it's such a jump in history so you almost worry that you need to really try and relate to this person and get and try and empathize with them fully and something about the costumes and the amazing designs 
you know you put a dress on and it just transforms you into that totally so well so that was a big help mm -hmm. daniel and bradley what about sword and uh, using sword and horse riding yeah i mean that's that's another you know another thing about about it is uh is you go to drama school and they and they go you know oh you know you'll be in the you'll be the costume and this thing and then, and then you can fake a lot of things but you can't fake looking good on a horse if you have no idea what you're doing so or or, or with, a, with a sword so there's we we got there early and um we had to do kind of riding lessons and um bradley you'd done quite a lot of riding before obviously because you know he's a bit of an expert so uh we went and we kind of i hadn't done much so we kind of went there and got to to kind of get used to being on a horse getting on and off a horse and i think like the thing that you realize is like bloody hell it's hard work getting on and off a horse and like having that all that costume and all that you know it, it's there's a whole new level of respect for for anyone who has armor or anything like that getting getting on and off a horse and um and then the sword fighting we had an amazing stunt coordinators and who were just so lovely and so sweet and very patient with bradley and i and a few other other uh, who, who had to kind of wield a sword so they were wonderful kind of uh, wonderfully patient but also wonderfully helpful in just how you how that period was in terms of how you sit on a horse or how you fight or you know all of those things so they were very useful in in, uh, in us preparing i was also very patient with daniel learning how to use a sword um <laughs> not that patient i mean come on three years of drama school what were you <laughs> um i think also because we have a sword fight and the, the hardest acting job I've ever had is to make it look like you're better with a sword than I am. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I... That was the biggest challenge. Of I don't want to don't want to toot my own horn, but uh, the performance in that scene is probably the best I've ever done. Um, <laughs> yeah. I would be wearing on that note, Frank, you said about costumes, I'd be wearing some of my costumes right now if I had them, because my costumes were they awesome. Were, there is were. a Renaissance poncho in there, which it's raining right now. <laughs> I wear it on the streets as we speak. I, love cool, You're always I, I had a pretty good poncho, I seem to remember. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, even, I even did uh, a self-tape wearing one of the oh costumes. Oh my God, yeah. And the, the audition was set in space and I, I went, I'm going to this costume because I can turn it into a space coat. And it became a space coat. <laughs> Radders, are you ever going to put that audition up, your space coat uh, audition? Because I feel like it was brilliant. No. <laughs> <laughs> However, I will do one bit from it. 52 minutes. There you go. There you, go. <laughs> you got the role, obviously. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> I didn't like the space coat, weirdly. <laughs> Uh, Nika and Valentina would like to know if each of you could say something in Italian. Ciao a tutti i fan dei Medici. Come si dice in italiano? Per uno bicchiere di vino rosso, per favore. Daniel, your turn. Ciao, bella. Ciao, <laughs> Yeah, I'm Again? ciao, bella. I'm pretty bad. <laughs> ciao, bella. Sebastian was very good at speaking Italian. Yeah, he yeah. was. Yeah. People think he was Italian. He, yeah, but I asked him that on the first season. I said, I couldn't know you spoke Italian. And he was like, I don't, darling. I <laughs> yeah. Oh, is that Sebastian? Yeah. yeah. He just put on a net like, weird voice, didn't he? You just yeah. keep making sounds. You not <laughs> pick up a few sentences. And so I would just go around like, see, 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 ah. <laughs> <laughs> Luca, it's Sia wants to know why you chose to tell the story of the Medici. Because it's a story telling the route of, uh, uh, of Europe to me, because uh, Medici were building an ideal uh, city full of art, full of uh, uh, people uh, that were called there from, uh, from, from Medici family 
to become uh, painters, uh, sculptors, and uh, and I like this way of ruling people. So not just thinking uh, to make politics, but thinking to let them live in a wonderful environment. You know, uh, so politics uh, in that period there was a wonderful combination of politics, art, and uh, try to make people living uh, in a better place with huge, strong ideas. There are so many people who have asked what it was like to work in Italy and to work with Italian actors and crew. Anybody uh, have any thoughts about that? I loved it. <laughs> I thought they, were they were talking too much. <laughs> It was lovely. The Italian crew were great. They were really good fun and they worked really hard and the Italian actors were amazing. Um, brilliant actors. Yeah, I loved it. Yeah, it was just amazing. Yeah. Just, yeah, it was crazy. I, I think just Italy as a whole is just like such a beautiful place. I want to know how you guys had the discipline to not drink wine and eat pasta every night. We did. I don't think we did. Yes. <laughs> you great. You look refreshed and rested every day. I ate a whole thing of pizza every morning when I came in. By the end <laughs> of the second series, I have a video of a costume department coming in with my dress, but they'd bring in a box of pizza with them. Yeah. <laughs> Just have it. I'd have it in my dressing room all day. And, and like, and the costume department would also like you. By the end of it, they they'd be like. The, these don't fit anymore. Like the pants that fit you <laughs> earlier, they were like, we got to let these out. You know, you'd like double the size. They would never say anything. They'd sort of make whispers. Yeah, exactly. Or just like tight around the arm. But also, <laughs> and then you'd, you'd you'd see the elastic just getting <laughs> longer and longer and longer. William Kiara wants to know if you will say hello to her friend Hamna. It would. Uh, it's her best friend in the world. Hamna, H-A-M-N-A. Hello, Hamda. Thank you for joining. Hopefully you're on, or if it's just your friend. Um, but yeah, thank you. There you go. You made it. Um, Bradley, why do you always die in shows? <laughs> <laughs> good question. It is a good question. Um, I feel like it's probably writers exacting uh, their dreams and desires out in a script and uh, placing me in this, these roles. Um, I don't know, uh, maybe, maybe that'll happen less in the future. I'm trying not to take it personally, Frank, <laughs> yes. at this stage. If I'd known you were gonna play the part, I wouldn't have killed him, but you know. You would have, you would have gone I've against history. Yes, and gone. Do you know what? <laughs> Next time. You haven't not died in a thing. I have, but uh, um, I feel like my more memorable performances are when people are like, oh, thank God he's gone. <laughs> You're just very good at dying. Yeah, very good. So did a, you die in Merlin? You didn't die in Merlin, did you? Don't give away spoilers. <laughs> but also, why haven't you watched the whole lot? You've just given away that you didn't watch all <laughs> five series. I know what happened to you in Paris. <laughs> what, what was the difference I, this won't, won't, William, this won't be for you, but for, for the rest of you, what was the difference between shooting season two and season three? Did it feel very different coming back to reprise the, the roles in the second season? The third, third season? Yeah, the, the third season. Yeah, I think it was really, I mean, what was really lovely was having Christian Dugay do all of the episodes. I mean, the fact that he like took that challenge on and put all of them together, and I think he's brilliant and... Um, the fact that he he basically kind of was with us every step of the way and tracking us all the way was a massive difference. I don't, I don't know if everyone else felt that, but I felt like it was a really helpful thing to have him um, kind of really be able to see it from the beginning to the end and, um, and to be kind of really a stickler for where things come in that because we're shooting all out of sequence. And so that was that was really wonderful um and 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 also i think you feel like you know a bit more about where you are and who this character is by the if once you've kind of lived in it for for a long time so it was it was that it felt a lot more kind of 
grounded, I think, personally, just being there a second time. Makes sense. Also, just the whole story, like the story moves on so much in terms of time and where these characters are at in their lives. So it was definitely like a different challenge coming back and like raising a family suddenly, having like loads of children. And, um, yeah, I don't know. I think it, it, felt, it felt like a, a, there was a lot of maturing that was also it was also you know it was interesting because we have a break of a year so in that time you sort of leave that character and then come back to it um but yeah it felt like a very different I, I think as you said like it's much I think much more grounded and it's focused on the family more mm -hmm. yeah. I'll tell you the difference between the two series <laughs> <laughs> no spoilers <laughs> no spoilers series two I'm there. We use the word grounded, all right? So far, I'll tell you what was grounded. Daniel Sharman, because I was there, keeping his feet on the floor. I go away for a little bit. I turn up a few weeks into filming the second series. It's aired in Italy. So, like, everyone's seen it. All of a sudden, all these people who turn up on set are like, ooh, Daniel Sharman, ooh la la. I turn up, this is not a joke, this is not a joke. I turn up on set. He sat there. We're in the middle of like a wood. He sat there. He's got one arm out like that. Someone's polishing his nails. He's got one arm out like that. Someone's giving him a hand massage. Someone's in hand a straw. There's like a straw. Someone just put it into his mouth. He said, thank you very much. I've never right. seen him so pampered in my Someone's entire life. Trimming his beard. Trimming, trimming, his, beard. trimming his beard. Putting on like a oh. tail under his face. Frank, can you see why writers might want to kill Bradley off? <laughs> <laughs> Sarah, Lorena, and actually several people want to know, did you look at the performance of Valentina Bella, who played your character in season one? And did you did you look at that performance and think of that or try to match it in any way, playing the same person? Uh, you know, not, not really, no. It's quite, I don't know whether that's a good thing to do sometimes. I think you have to take character and make, make it your own. I mean, I, I did watch, I did watch, um, uh, quite a bit of series one because my husband played the Doge of Venice, didn't he, in episode five? <laughs> um, so I did watch it and really liked it. And I re I remember watching her at the time and really really liking what she did. But I I wasn't cast in the part of Lu Lucrezia by then. But I didn't revisit again. I um I didn't think that was a good idea. So I just did what I felt was right. Uh, somebody calling themselves Medici Masters wants to know. When you play intimate scenes, and I think Bradley, Cernerva, and Daniel, you all had intimate scenes. Um, is it uncomfortable? Is it uh, difficult? Want to take yeah. that first, Dan? Uh, I mean, it's, it's, it's always very, you know, people are always like, God, that must be, uh, that must be really exciting. And it's like, you know, there's, there's 40 people, like, you know, knocking around. It's, it's, there, it's usually like, way too kind of hot or way too cold and you know there's 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 people kind of like you're wearing you know it's just a very odd thing that you have to kind of navigate and um it's definitely it, it's just about kind of trying to make something as as kind of um comfortable but realistic as possible but it's definitely like something that you you look on the schedule and you're like oh god okay right it's gonna be a gonna be a few days of just very uncomfortable kind of chats you know like it's very intimate you have to kind of let that stuff go a little bit when you're doing those scenes and and kind of just know that you're you know you're with this person and you have to kind of make that as comfortable and as, as easy as possible even if it's kind of extremely like, odd and uh, uh, and kind of yeah just uncomfortable I think if you're like comfortable with the crew and with the person that you're doing it with, it's always just fine. And often these things are so much more technical than you were you were made to believe when you're watching it. Um, and it also helped that there wasn't like lots of nudity. I think nudity is something that does make does like get in the way and becomes you know a separate issue. But if it's just not just because that's like just as powerful. But if you're if you're doing romantic scenes or whatever, or intimate scenes, 
that kind of no I don't know I think you're always kind of being intimate if you're pretending that you're husband and wife in every scene you're kind of always like pretending you're husband and wife or pretending you're whatever sleeping mm -hmm. with each other or whatever you know what I mean mm -hmm. but. um props to the crew on this one and specifically the first whose name what's the name of the of our first who in series two or series three series two oh the guy used to jump up and down all the time yes um uh oh uh, Lee, no uh what was his name Le, 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 john's first or or jan's first jan's first Tito. what Tito. Tito. Yeah. Tito. 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 i was thinking about him i was like Chiro, what a guy. Yeah. Chiro. Oh, he was. Yeah, Chiro. Chiro. <laughs> no. Oh. no. But no, so. Nico, Nico, was the first. <laughs> Nico Marzano was the first in the second. Yeah. yeah. So myself and Matilda uh, did a very intimate scene. And Chiro was the first AD on that. And he basically laid down the law for... Uh, all of the crew who were very uh, sort of respective of what he said because uh, Matilda was obviously in a slightly vulnerable position in terms of physically and bearing herself and Chiro basically just did the job of making everybody very comfortable everybody just kind of like uh, just being respectful of the of the scenario and then when you're actually doing it um, there's obviously a lot of mechanics to it, uh, you know, camera setups and what have you. Um, but it, I think it helps when you're uh, working with someone who is, I suppose, generous and responsive and has a good understanding of uh, the scenario at the same time. And I was very fortunate because um, I got to work with Matilda on that. Whereas Sinerva had to work with Daniel a lot of the time. So I imagine that was probably quite tough. Of but usually it's quite good. Um, Matilda actually messaged me about that. Badly. That's, she didn't have a time. <laughs> Francesca says she loves all of your productions, Lux Vida's productions. But, um, sorry, Angela wants to know how you balanced historical accuracy with contemporary drama. Uh... I believe it's it's always a, a thin red line, you know, that you have to make uh, enjoying people, uh, trying to be as much as accurate as possible, but trying to give them as much uh, fun as they can have. I mean, uh, and this is always um, a discussion between me and Frank. <laughs> so, and we, we try to do our best, but. It, it's it's easier when you are talking about like uh, about people that were living uh, around Medici family uh, called uh, Leonardo, uh, Botticelli, Michelangelo. Uh, so you, you you are you you are telling the story of a period full of history and full of great uh, personalities. Very good. Will, can you compare your role in Medici to your role in Arrow? Um, I do not think I can. Arrow was, Arrow was probably, when was Arrow? Arrow was years ago, but it was more modern and Medici's period. So I don't think I can compare them at all, but um, yeah, I don't think I could. Completely different. Yeah, they are completely different. Sinerva, um, I don't know how to say her name. Lizzyx wants to know, are there similarities between you and Clarice? Um, I think so. I mean, I think there have to be, otherwise I probably wouldn't have got the part. But I, 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 I don't know. I, I found her quite hard to relate to at the beginning. I think especially when she's wants to be, you know, wants to go into the church and wants to devote herself to God and be a nun you know it felt very foreign um but definitely as as the story progresses and the the family progresses I think you're drawing on your own experiences or your own um how you might approach a situation so 
I think, yeah, I relate to her. Sarah, what, uh, what sides of Lucrezia did you love and hate the most? Oh, I didn't hate any side of her. I thought she was an amazing woman. I mean, an amazing woman. What I, I loved about her was her um, intelligence, I suppose. She was so brilliant and uh, well-read and and uh, and influential. Her, the influ I loved the influence she had over her son, you know, and I would say that she made him who he was. <laughs> Behind every great man is a great woman. Mm -hmm. I didn't hate anything about her. She was great. I can't tell you how many people have asked all of you to say hello to them. So I'm sorry to just disappoint everybody. We'd be spending the whole hour saying hello to different people if we if we did any more of that. Um, several people have asked if there was a favorite scene or a favorite day or any pranks that were played on set. Any of those questions? Uh... The day Bradley left was pretty amazing. <laughs> It was, a real, it was a real buoyant feeling on set of just relief. Um, I think, I mean, there were so many amazing days. Like, we, you know, we were shooting in these such incredible locations, like all these locations that we were actually, I mean, some of these places, these kind of heritage sites, which are so insanely great to be in. And um, such wonderful people, you know, there's some, People that aren't here today, like uh, Francesco Montari, who was fucking so great to work with and such a wonder. And it, there were days where I was just like, this is so amazing to get to work with these amazing Johnny Harris and these people that you, you just kind of like, you're amazed at all the points to be in these such amazing locations with these people and telling this story that means so much to Italians. And, um, and you're just like, wow, you know, I mean, Sarah and I were saying this the other day, it's like, that I don't, I think we were, it was a unique experience that I, I don't expect to be able to kind of do again. You know, there's, there were so many incredible days um, because you were in the location and with these people and telling the story and it was, it was just, you know, very special. Yeah, it was, well, I mean, a, a, any day that, the days that stood out usually uh, included um, Sebastian D'Souza. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he he's he was a little he was a little minx he was a little troublemaker so uh, there was always quite a lot of comedy on set when he was about <laughs> so good uh so Nerva, martina wants to know how many times people mis mispronounce your name oh yeah it's i mean multiple times a day hmm. although not right now because i'm not seeing many people but yeah, it's been an ongoing issue throughout my life, so. You wouldn't have thought Carlson was that hard to get wrong. <laughs> Carlson's fine, yeah. Poor old Sinobi. I know. Yeah. Come on, Ray. <laughs> I went to a thing last summer, and they, it was like, yeah, someone read out my name, and it, they literally said Siobhan Ray. <laughs> and make a, for us a little tutorial how to pronounce uh, your name. Uh, <laughs> yes. Very tricky. <laughs> Say it, it's Sinerva. Yeah, Sinerva. Yeah. But go. I mean, in Norwegian, it's like Sinerva. So it's like, you know, how are you going to tell anyone to pronounce it like that? <laughs> Not that I want you to pronounce it like that. This is for everyone. How are you all doing in the lockdown and, and where are you? Not your addresses, but where in the world are you all? Bradley, postcode, what was that again? Yeah. yeah it's, uh, uh, I'm not at home in, in London at all. I'm somewhere else. <laughs> I'm in Hampshire. I'm in Hampshire in a little village in Hampshire in my house. And it's fine. I'm, I'm quite, you know, I'm, I'm okay with lockdown. I'm in London, very near Bradley. I've seen Sarah's house. I would be absolutely fine in lockdown if I was in Sarah's house as well. <laughs> <laughs> and how are you you I like the way that you put yourself in that small room, Parish, in the West Wing. And not <laughs> <laughs> it's it's more relatable. Yeah. More relatable. I didn't want to guys, make you rubbish. Guys, bags. I'm just one of you. I'm just one of you. You know, look, look this is my like, this is my bedroom. You know, well, it's like you see Parish's house. Luke, Luke has put himself in his small room. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, 
I'm in Rome. I'm in Rome with my family, my six kids, and my wife, all together. The the, the no no the, the the house is not big enough to keep all all, all of us inside it. Well, some of you should move into Sarah's then. Yeah. <laughs> No, Bradley, that's, just, that's my house. You're looking at it right there. There's nothing yeah, else there. Bill, what about you? How are you coping in the lockdown? Yeah, I'm good. Well, I'm living in Somerset in England, um, and it's a little bit boring, I must say, but it's fun spending time with family. So dad's all over from work and stuff, so everybody's home, so it's nice. Where are you in Somerset? Um, we are in, I'm not going to say exactly, but North Wotton, if you know what Oh, that is. okay, I know, yeah. Oh. Yes, it's very nice. Very good. Hi. Bradley, Martinez says that you gesticulate like an Italian. Did you know that? So it's the place rubbing off on me. <laughs> that was I went there, I just, I just fell in love with Italy and just, you know, just went into my soul. And now I've got these hands that I can't control. <laughs> the, place. the spirit is inside you. <laughs> See. <laughs> Did, did any of you notice a difference playing with Italian actors in the way you behaved as British actors versus the Italians you were playing with? They're, they're, they're so much better behaved, Frank. <laughs> Italian actors. <laughs> I mean, the job those guys had to do, because they're obviously were acting in, their, uh, in a different language. The, the, it was so impressive how they were able to sort of like grasp moments. You have the script, you have what, you know, you say in the scene, but there are always things that just kind of are gonna, you know, gonna bounce or happen in the scene. And like, I mean, I remember Aurora, Aurora would just catch anything you throw at her and just react as though you were speaking to her in a mother tongue, even though you obviously weren't. Um, Matteo, who you mentioned earlier, would just, you know, uh, he would, he bizarrely would say that his English wasn't that good. And yet his, his understanding of communication, I felt, was, was pretty high, certainly when we're doing scenes together. So it was, I was always sort of having to stop myself from just kind of gawping at the Italians when they were, you know, performing in uh, English. And I was thinking, how are they, how are they doing this? And I went, oh, no, I'm supposed to say a line now. Okay. <laughs> there was a wonderful thing that Francesco, because we had our crowd, we did this crowd scene. Francesco, who, uh, who um, plays Savonarola in this season, he, um, because obviously the crowds weren't really understanding uh, the English uh, version that he was doing, he would then like switch into doing it in Italian and then switch back into doing it in English. And I was just like, I was just there going, are you? Are you kidding? This is insane. What an amazing skit. And it was like, he just had this incredible scene where he, not only was he able to just perform it in this beautiful kind of way, but he was able to just kind of go, this isn't landing. Let me try this. Like, and then kind of switching into Italian and then watching their reaction and then coming back. And I was just like, yeah, it was just amazed. It's pretty amazing. Aurora wants to know if you were all still in touch and would you go have a pizza together once quarantine is over? Is that Aurora? Aurora, Aurora would know, wouldn't she? Definitely. No, that's not your Aurora. No. no. Definitely. Absolutely. Yeah. Defo. Absolutely. We had Finn not that long ago, didn't I, Finn? I, yeah, Sarah and Seb and I occasionally have a fun night together. Yeah. Oh, thanks for the invite, guys. That's that's pretty bad. Actually, I think we did try and invite you and I think you were in LA. Did. Yeah, yeah, it must have been that, yeah. You definitely did. <laughs> <laughs> uh, tapes. Daniel's a bit far away to be. Yeah. yeah. William, Aleha wants to know what you enjoyed most about your character. Well, Giovanni, I think, I just get, I guess his love for his family, really, because I don't want to give the plot away um, about Giovanni, but he really sacrifices something he loves. Um, I mean, he didn't really have a choice, but um, he did it for his family. And I think that's what I loved about Giovanni um, because I do something similar, so. Luca, do you have a favorite painter of the Renaissance? Ah, uh, I would say Leonardo. Mm. <laughs> because uh, we had you know, Frank. 
<laughs> Why do you say that, Luca? What yeah. particular what, what reason would you be saying that? Because we are doing a wonderful show. Uh, <laughs> so there it is. There it, is. Start, it was all like, Sandro was, Botticelli a couple of years ago. <laughs> now it's nothing but Leonardo. <laughs> <laughs> no. The arena side is full of wonderful painters, Botticelli, Leonardo, Michelangelo, almost difficult to say. But they're really part of the world history. So, and really, that was really due to the love for arts uh, that Medici uh, was having. I mean, surrounding themselves about art, uh, uh, artists was, I mean, uh, some, they create something unbelievable. Um, we're going to have to go to the, the two people on camera very soon, but just a couple more quick questions from Florence X Medici. Do you remember what your last scene was, each of you, the cast? The last scene you played before you wrapped? I do, yeah. I, I, it's the scene the, by the cast of Sant'Angelo with when um he put puts the the visor down on his arm, armor and having seen the the mur the murder and puts his visor down it was very moving i don't remember yeah I, neither it was in pienza but i can't remember i remember yours paris really what was my last scene wasn't your last scene the um yeah, it was in Pienza outside on the. I thought felt we wrapped you. You wrapped kind of the out that little outside courtyard part. Yeah, maybe, but I don't remember the scene. I was definitely around there, but I can't remember what it was. I've got a little story. Do you want to hear a story about my last scene? Go on, Brad. Are you going to tell it anyway? <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, hang on a minute. Where was the place that we had, blah, blah, blah. you know, where we had the council, the big tall council place? Where was that? Volterra. Volterra. Yeah. We're in Volterra. I won't describe the scene. Um, spoilers. But we're inside filming and they've sort of curtained off the area to make it nighttime. And it's my last scene that I appear in the show, as well as being the last scene that I film. And I was like, I'd suddenly had a moment because I was sort of by myself with a bunch of people who I, I for whatever reason, the scene we were shooting, I didn't know anybody apart from uh, Christian, the director. And uh, we shot it. And I was sort of like, oh my, like, this is my last scene in Medici. And I, I welled up pretty quick. In fact, you can see it, I think, on the, uh, yeah. on the take. I was like, this is, no one else is experiencing this in this little room we're in. Me, I'm privately going, <laughs> and we finish the scene, and I just very slowly just meander out, just to sort of not make a fuss, do a nice little, you know, like quiet exit. I'm fully aware that I'm sort of like crying now. I've got some serious tears in my eyes. I open the curtain up, and there's some people who have come to watch us film in the square, and it's broad daylight. And I was like, right, I'll go that way so that they don't, you know, I'm not like crying in the face of these people who come to see me. Anyway, I walk a few steps, outbursts Christian from the, from the curtains that they put up. And he goes, guys, everybody, that's a wrap on Bradley. <laughs> to which I then go, oh! <laughs> and bawl my eyes out and, Essentially, have to run to wherever it was that was the was the was the base. Basically, that was my last scene. Oh, Brad! Oh, uh, nice well. What was your scene? I don't remember. I know it was in the studio in Rome, but I don't remember which one, which scene it was. I remember my agent was there, so I was like trying not to be too emotional. But someone handed me a bottle of prosecco. And I was like downing it. And then I was like, oh God, like I can't believe I'm done. And I was like really like wallowing in the like celebrations. And then suddenly it was like, okay, next scene, guys. <laughs> <laughs> my dressing room had a little cry. 
Will, what was yours? Uh, I don't remember. I think I was definitely in the studio because I think we finished on the studio once for me, but um, I don't remember the exact scene. Okay. Um, we're going to do our audience questions, our video questions now. We have two, and the first is from Elisa Sasso. So let's see if this works. There we go. We can see you. Hi, Elisa. Oh, hello. Hello. Hi to everyone from Italy. Hi. Hello. hello. Ciao. So, oh, ciao. <laughs> A few days ago, it was my birthday, and you know, I'm in love with my crushes, Daniel, Bradley, hello. And this is like <laughs> an arsenal goal. Birthday to you. Thank you. Happy birthday <laughs> to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Thank you. I'm gonna die. So my question is for I think everyone. Everyone else is too. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I have a crush on you. Really, really big, you know? <laughs> how are you, Elisa? You don't mind my asking. What? What what you, how old did you turn? Nineteen. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Oh. It's all downhill from oh. there, Elisa. Yeah. It's all downhill. <laughs> That's a great yeah. question. Okay, so I have a question and it's for everyone. If you could change your role with a different bitches role, who would it be and why? Ooh. A different mm -hmm. what, sorry? A different part. You could play a different, you have a different role in the series. Part. What would you play? Yes. Oh, that's a good question. That's a really good question, isn't it? Um... Thank you. I think I'd like to be one of the popes. Mm. Yeah. Oh, Those yeah. costumes are pretty amazing. Yeah. yeah. I think I would be maybe um, the pope. Yeah, the pope. Pope Sixtus. John yeah, Pope, pope Sixtus. It's gee, he just yeah. It's, it's a cool part. I do that, and I like the costume. Good one. I'd like to see what I looked like with one of those haircuts. You know the ones where you shave the middle. Yeah. You have those. I think they were. I think they were priests, right? Or yeah, I remember Jacob and um. I was supposed to have one. Yes, that's right. Tonsured, they call it, right? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. You I would didn't. love to try that on. It's not really a part, though, is it? <laughs> <laughs> it's a haircut. Can do that without having to play a part. There, we can. Like, we can sort that out easy. Come on, boys. What are you going to be? Um, I know you I, all want to be me. Yeah, <laughs> but you know, you can't all be Paris. I think I'd. I think I would have loved to. Um, I'd like to have been Botticelli. I think just because I. I would love to be in a suit like that's what I would love to be doing anyway like painting and drawing and doing all that I, thought, I think that would have been quite fun Seb hated his drawing lessons and <laughs> he was always like oh, I hate this and I was like I, that's what I'd be doing you know all day so I feel like I would have just enjoyed the prep of that like I remember him carting around with his art teacher who, who <laughs> is carting around going I've got a bloody another lesson oh, I, can't, I can't be doing this and uh, I think I would have just enjoyed I would have enjoyed that Brothers, uh, yeah, um, uh, maybe Jacopo. Mm, good one. Maybe. Yep. Uh, in fact, not maybe. Yeah, sure, Jacopo. That's a good one. That is a good one. Yeah, death. Will so get to sort like this. I, mean, I loved all the sword fighting, so probably Lorenzo or Bradley's character. Um, I think that's really cool. Sadly, Giovanni didn't have any sword fighting scenes, but I think that's really cool. So yeah. Makes sense. All, them, all, them all right. Our second uh, video question comes from you, Elisa. To by Elisa. It's Tony. Um, is it Gabrielle or Gabriele? Uh, You've covered both bases there, Frank. Don't worry. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Tony's, Tony's coming. Oh, sorry. Not Tony. Denise. Oh. oh. 
Hello. Uh -huh. <laughs> 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 hey, Denise, you're muted. You're muted and video is. Ragioli. Oh. Uh -huh. There you go. Oh. There she is. There she is. We heard. We heard you. We can't see you though. Denise. Denise. Yeah, Denise. Oh, no. T technical problem. Sorry. We're going to oh, try she's Gaia. Gone. She's, she's gone. gone. She's Red gone. gone. Oh, we have a different person now. We have Gaia Sanguinetti. Wow, this is a dog eat dog world. Just I know. <laughs> out of there. Just Dude, not. The red there. chair on Graham Norton. Uh -oh. I think we can hear her. Oh, oh, no. oh my god. No. Gone. Oh, god, it's dead as well. That's it. That's the, the, you know. That's yeah. All right. oh, well, no. we believe it or not, we've run out of time anyway. Uh, <laughs> oh. the hour is over. The hour uh, is over. There and there were literally a hundred, hundred and fifty questions we didn't even get to. So um Jeez. everybody who's questioned we could not. <laughs> I apologize. Go to at Daniel Sharman and he will <laughs> answer all the questions <laughs> all individually and say yeah. your names. But I would, I, I'll once post again, Bradley's address and you can <laughs> <the> <laughs> and just knock, knock on the door, just ask him a question. He loves when people come over. <laughs> I'd like to, uh, to, to just say a special hello again to all the, um, essential workers who who wanted to watch this live and were not able to and uh, we hope you get a chance to watch it later on yeah and i'd like to thank sonerva and sarah and william and daniel and bradley and luca my dear partner for being here and everybody at premiere and avi and charlie and amy and uh, hannah and uh, callum and emily for supporting us behind the scenes and um enjoy the show we premiere tomorrow on netflix uh, season three, and you can also catch up on seasons one and two. So thank you very much, everybody. Hey, Great thank you, Frank. Yeah, yeah thank thanks, you. Frank. Thanks, thank thank you. First one day, I hope. See you soon. Yeah. Bye, everybody. Bye. Ciao, ciao. Am I staying on with Daniel and Bradley and Sonova? <laughs> yeah, I think nobody will know that. Right? Nobody will.